the sun upon a grand stage. Beyond their tradition and behind the pomp. Roses, yes, but it's no garden party. It's an old-fashioned fight. Size against speed. Muscle against sizzle. Potency against velocity. Both accomplished, neither content. Not yet. Monty and LaMichael, Russell and Darren, Brett and Chip, Big Ten and Pac-12. Today in a game named for a flower, don't expect any bouquets. Old school, new class. Wisconsin, Oregon, in the Rose Bowl. You are looking live at the granddaddy of them all. Sign of a holiday tradition that has brightened the new year for over a century. And on a gorgeous, sunny Southern California afternoon, we welcome you to the Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. In a theme of redemption, the Badgers are looking for their first Pasadena win in 12 years after losing to TCU last January. The Ducks are going after their first Rose Bowl victory in 95 years after losing the BCS title game last season. Happy New Year, everybody. With Kirk Herb Street, I'm Brett Musburger. Thanks for sharing part of this afternoon with us. And uh, Herbie, it's warm, but it's always a great <laughs> scene here. Well, there's a reason they call it the granddaddy of them all. There are so many great venues for sports, but I think for what you and I think anyway, this is as good as it gets. Uh, there's something about showing up here January 1st, in this case, January 2nd, to see the Rose Bowl. It's as good as it gets. Now the Oregon offense, they can put points on the board. They sure can. It starts with LaMichael James in the running game of the Ducks, and the goal today for Oregon is to get James and Barner and company in space against this Wisconsin defense. We've seen LaMichael James really grow as a back. He's always had great acceleration. This is earlier against Stanford ability to make cuts on a dime here's where I think he's really uh, I think matured his patience in the backfield finding the hole and then accelerating downfield also he's become more physical and more elusive something that was Wisconsin's defense is concerned about because of that concern I really think you'll see Brett Bielema's Badgers load up against that running game be concerned about defending him in space and it could open up some big plays from Darren Thomas looking for uh, the, the younger wide receivers Josh Huff and, and also Dat uh, D'Anthony Thomas on the Badgers side of the ball no one more balanced Monty Ball and Russell Wilson uh, you're exactly right and balance will be very very important today it'll start with Monty Ball Monty Ball has really come on this year in the Big Ten very very physical as a back he drops some weight to get quicker but he's been able to maintain his power as we see here against Nebraska earlier in the year also has great quickness ability to pull away from defenders something he'll need to be able to do against Oregon's athletic defense I love this the vision the hole here to the play side has collapsed against Penn State so he feels it to the backside gets out all the way to the perimeter and turns around the corner and picks up yards if he can get going it could set things up for Russell Wilson the play action is very very important you heard the guys downstairs talking about how quick and how athletic Russell Wilson is scrambling like this will be big against Oregon and then like this Jared Crick comes free he's not gonna scramble but he's just gonna avoid the physical contact set reset his feet and then throw the ball downfield so the balance I think attack from Wisconsin is important but I think if Wisconsin wins it'll be because Russell Wilson throwing the ball against a defense that's very concerned about Monty Ball. Uh, Herbie, conventional wisdom is this heat's going to hurt Wisconsin more than Oregon. Do you agree? I, I do. I, I think it's one thing to prepare for three weeks, and everybody's talked about what an advantage Auburn and LSU and Ohio State is, have had going up against Oregon. I really think it's about playmakers. Dealing with this heat will be a major, major concern in the second half for the Wisconsin defense. straight year here come the Badgers so let's go down to the third member of our team Aaron Andrews is with Chip Kelly Aaron Happy New Year Happy New Year Brent thank you so much Chip let me ask you here you told me a pregame you haven't played in temperatures like this since August 
How will the heat affect your speed throughout the course of the game? We hope because of our conditioning and the way we practice that it's not going to bother us. But because we rotate so many guys, hopefully that's going to be to our benefit. Over the past two bowl games, you guys have met with some pretty physical defenses. Had a tough time. What has to click early today? Same thing. And we can't turn the ball over early. And that's what we did in some of those other games. You know, we got to make sure we hold on to the football. Turnovers are going to be key today. All right, thanks. Thank you. All right, Brent. And on the other side, Brett Bielman back for the second straight year, his sixth season as the Badger head coach. One of the great scenes in all of college athletics is the start of a Rose Bowl as we allow our director, producer, and cameraman to take you around this great stadium. Just settle back, everybody. The Badgers will get the ball first. Enjoy. Pasadena, Abraderis from the nine for the Badgers. Russell Wilson will come to the 22 yard line for the first offensive series. Russell Wilson, as many of you know, is such an interesting story. Herbie, when you look back, of course, he signed a big contract with the Colorado Rockies, and because he had graduated, he could transfer from North Carolina State and play football at Wisconsin. Graduating in three years in Raleigh tells you a lot about his work ethic. It took him one month to learn the Wisconsin offense, to be ready for two days, to win the position. He voted unanimously as a captain by his two mates, teammates by after just being on campus for one month and has had a great year with only three interceptions. Peter Kahn starts at center. That's a story. Monty Ball hammers to the 31, and that will be a continuing story. Herbie, some of our impact players. Well, we've talked a lot already about Russell Wilson. Obviously, his ability to throw and run today will be big. How physical can Monty Ball be today with great quickness? Nick Toon has got to be a difference maker on one side when he's matched up against some smaller corners from Oregon. And Jared Abraderis has had a great year, averaging 16 yards a catch. So Khan's missed the last three games with that ankle injury. Right back to it for a first down. First down. Ball hammers his way to the 39-yard line, and Michael Clay with the tackle for the Ducks. Interesting, the first couple plays, Wisconsin showing their power, running between the tackles and running downhill against this Oregon defense. Oregon knows they're a bit undersized up front. And Nick Aliota, their defensive coordinator, is more than willing to take chances by attacking with safeties to get him down in the box. The big boys go to work again. Near midfield for still another first down. So that front with Peter Kahn's back at center. Let's show you these 300 pounders who have done such a sensational job. Ricky Wagner. And there, of course, moving back is Travis Frederick to left guard, Kevin Zeitler, Josh Oglesby. Look at the size of those biggest. And you could argue that this is, when Kahn's is in there, it's the best and most physical offensive line in the country, along with Stanford, probably the two top offensive lines we saw this year in college football. From their own 49. Sticking with it. And finally, the Ducks are able to come up with a play, allowing only one yard with DeWitt Stuckey, number 52, taking on the running back. And fresh troops already on the field for Nick Aliotti. And that is going to be a story because you know how quickly the Oregon offense moves. Aliotti up here in the box told me before the game he has got to keep rotating his front all game long or they're going to get worn out. James White now the running back. First pass of the game, and it's complete on the slant to tune. This is one of the ways that Wisconsin's going to try to combat Oregon attacking and committing too many people to the line of scrimmage. The offensive line in the backs actually ran a run play. This is a design power play. So the line went ahead and ran a running play, and he looked off to the left, and he saw they had too many guys up close, so he quickly threw it out to Nick Toon. Congratulations to Michigan State in triple overtime. They defeat Georgia. We welcome those of you who have been watching the Spartans' first series of the game in the Rose Bowl. And the Badgers, Russell Wilson, back-to-back -back passes.
And another first down. He gets to the outside, and Monty Ball, the great tailback, who has excellent hands, makes his first reception. Well, uh, this is what they call creep. The defensive line does not get down into the line of scrimmage, and this is a good job of recognizing they bring one too many. The linebacker, DeWitt Stuckey, does not get out that time in coverage, gets locked up with Nick Toon, makes it an easy read and throw that time for Russell Wilson. So the Badgers started this drive on their own 23 yard line. And now they have driven to the Ducks 38. Play action and it's beautiful. Russell Wilson goes deep. Abraderis has got a touchdown. A beautiful play action call by Paul Christ. All set up by the hammering of Monty Ball. And they bit on the fake. And as you said, when they run the football, it sets up this little outside move and up against a true freshman. He went right by him at Wisconsin. That is a textbook drive by Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator. Run the football, get the safeties up, and then get him in one-on-one -on -one coverage and go right by him with the double move for the touchdown. Philip Welsh tacks on the extra point. Russell Wilson and the Badgers. Strike first in the granddaddy of them all. Eighty two degrees here in Pasadena, California. Two great groups of fans. You can see the the duck fans gathered together and of course the Badgers. Be interesting to see how Oregon bounces back here after giving up that touchdown drive. Some Georgia and Michigan State fans are just saying, "Oh wow, <laughs> look at that helmet! <laughs> right. You believe that, Molly? Have you seen that? You can <laughs> see yourself." The Anthony Thomas over his head. It'll come out on the 20-yard line, and Darren Thomas is forced to keep it on the first play of the game and Mike Taylor the leading tackler in the Big Ten Conference with his first stop here in the Rose Bowl uh, Wisconsin's been preparing for three weeks to face this tempo they've had two scout offenses running at him to try to simulate what Oregon's offense might be like now they're seeing it for the first time motions to Anthony Thomas and Darren keeps it again first two plays of the game and that's a story Herbie because he really has not carried the ball as much this year as he did last year. Yeah, and Chip Kelly will tell you it's because of the way their games have gone and the, what defenses have dictated based on the option reads. It looks like in these first couple plays, Wisconsin saying, let's give him a read to keep the ball in his hands as opposed to giving it to Kenyon Barner or LaMichael James. An efficient passer. He still hands it off to LaMichael for the first down, trying to get to the edge where he's got that great speed. And Henry, number seven, the fine safety for the Badgers gets him out of bounds. A great block here by Mark Asper and Grassu, the center pulling around, just cuts down Chris Borland, the linebacker. And with LaMichael James, all he needs is a crease. And now here comes Oregon with the tempo. 23 yards, puts it at midfield. First pass of the game for the Ducks, and it is complete to Josh Huff. Now the impact players, it starts with Darren Thomas. Not just his ability to run, but his ability to throw. Michael James, of course. The Anthony Thomas and Josh Huff have quick, big playability in the passing game today. Something Wisconsin's concerned about. And of Badger territory. And coming back with great stop by Ms. Egwu on that play right there on Michael James' second carry. Darren Thomas, Brent, you said it. He hasn't really had to run the ball as much this year comes in 22 and 3 as a starter really I, I think has fought through some some uh, injuries earlier in the year watching him to practice this week with you just seems to be in complete command and understands this offense right now very very well so to Anthony motions Darren looks that way throws to an open receiver reaching for the end zone and it's down on the one yard line two and a makes the catch and the line judge right there spotted it just inside the one yard line. Watch the patience by Thomas. He wants to throw it right 
there, and he pulls back, buys a little bit more time, and then throws it up in the air. And now LaMichael steps in for the tying touchdown. It did not take the Ducks long. These two teams, folks, combined, have put up 90 points a game. <laughs> we are just underway with 14 <laughs> and 9.41 to go here in the first quarter. How about Michael James getting his first touchdown in a BCS Bowl game? He's played against Ohio State, Auburn last year, and now against Wisconsin. And, of course, that formation for the extra point, they show it too, and then they'll shift back out of it. Donato for the tie. So 2 and A has been their go-to guy all season long. 40 catches for 441 yards. He sets up the touchdown. And Michael James, one of the best running backs in the country, picks up six. It to Abigail's at the he slips a little bit, regains his balance, and out to about the. Here's his fifth carry. And he got close to the 25, and John Boyette, the safety, makes his first stop. This is the last drive, and this really started by Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson trying to be able to throw the ball, but really Monty Ball. They, Pounded the Oregon defense with the running game, and then it's set up with the play action and getting it downfield, getting the one-on-one -on -one coverage. Russell Wilson very comfortable, whether it's in the pocket or outside, with his accuracy. Draw play, Monty Ball breaks to daylight for a first down. Russell Wilson with a brush block. Ball still on his feet. And across the 40-yard line with the day's best run here in the early going. Boy, this offensive line doing some great things up front with some seal blocks. And again, with these kind of backs, they're going to run through arm tackles. Two arm tackles he's able to get through. Look at that stiff arm. And it's so impressive to see Monty Ball, who lost 20 pounds and wanted to get faster, but he did not lose his upper body strength and his lower body strength. And if you do not get in front of him and put your shoulders on him, you're not going to bring Monty Ball down as two Oregon defenders learned that on that play. Yep. from the gun covered throws back beautifully to the five yard line is Monty Ball who slipped out of the backfield was not the primary on the play and Russell was able to pick him up and this is where mobility is something different in the Wisconsin offense Scott Tolzien was a great quarterback but he didn't provide this element to this offense. So they can run the football, they can throw, and when things break down, Russell Wilson can buy enough time on a broken play to find Monty Ball to be able to pick up the first down and much more. 30 yards on third and six. A first and goal. Ball cuts back, breaks a tackle. Stuckey with the stop for the Ducks. Stucky makes the play, but Brandon Hanna, backup defensive end, in on a goal line situation, actually slowed Monty Ball down. So in the red zone, no team in the country more efficient overall than the Badgers. They have more touchdowns in the red zone, not just the field goals. That was that percentage that you saw there, but touchdown-wise, they are virtually unstoppable. Play action again. Russell Wilson got open field. He'll walk in. The defense over pursued to its left, and it left Russell Wilson with only one defender to be concerned with. And, and, and Nick Aliotti, he spends so much time. Because you got to be concerned about Monty Ball. You got to be concerned about the fullback in the flat, the tight end in the flag. Oh, by the way. Who's got the quarterback if he takes off and runs? It's just, you can't cover it all. And that's what a mobile quarterback who has poise and can throw provides for this offense. The extra point is tacked on. 
So another seven play scoring drive for the Badgers. Could this be the Alamo Bowl all over again? So the Badgers leading it will kick it off. It'll be fielded on the four by Thomas. First time he's touched the ball. Close to the 30 yard line. There's Kenyon Barner now in the game for the Ducks getting his first carry and uh, he's out of bounds on that on that far side. Oregon not afraid to be aggressive when they get pinned down. You and I have called enough Ducks games to realize that if they see something that they can try to be aggressive and they're not going to pull their horns in here and just say oh let's be careful. They'll continue to run their offense even though they're pinned back deep. And exploding into the middle is DeAnthony Thomas. Can't catch him. Touchdown Oregon. His nickname is Black Mamba. And he has struck for 91 yards. World class speed out of Crenshaw High School, right here in Los Angeles. Maldonado for the tie. So as the first quarter comes to an end, an electrifying run by DeAnthony Thomas. Henry in a foot race. Too much speed. We just had a record set here, Herbie. I had forgotten. I did the last record, 88 yards. Tyrone Wheatley oh. for the Wolverines against Washington in 93, broken by that 91-yard burst. So DeAnthony Thomas goes into the record book with the longest run from scrimmage, and it is fielded on the six by Abraderis. Abraderis. To the 37 yard line. This is what. And they're going to play action out of it. A beautiful call, and Pedersen, the tight end, crosses the 40 to the 38 yard line. Well, of course, they're anticipating with the jumbo package, they're going to try to just churn up some yards, but I love the aggressive nature by Paul Christ. Shows play action. Monty Ball consumes most of the defense. And Pedersen, a great receiving tight end, gets just enough of an edge off Deion Jordan, who slipped at the line of scrimmage trying to stay with him. Made it pretty easy that time for Wilson. 17 yards on third and one. And now they come back with that running play to the 34-yard line. And that's a better first down run than they've had in the last couple of series. Stuckey making the stop. Nice balanced attack here by by Wilson and the Badgers. I love how calm Russell Wilson is. I just love his Isn't demeanor. Calm, though? I mean, you, you know, he played in minor league baseball, drafted in the fourth round by the Rockies. Just has a, a certain demeanor about him, a certain awareness about him that I think this team really has fed off of this year. He was fabulous at the luncheon yesterday. He interviewed a couple of his teammates, and he did such a good job. Second down, Wilson. Drops it off wide open in underneath and that's tune again and it's hard to believe that he was that wide open and they've got a first down at the 16 yard line. Well, Kiki Alonso I think this time broke coverage he comes up through there blitzing and I think he probably should have been able to sit back there he was hesitant and that's the only reason I question if he should have been able to come through left it wide open underneath for Nick Toon with Alonzo coming there and again Russell Wilson with the vision downfield finds his open man for that easy first down back in the red zone where the Badgers have been lethal this year rolling still to the right and he'll hook it out of 
bounds and be careful over there. Did a penalty flag come yes, flying? Sir. Yes, it did. Uh, there's there's the mobility coming to play again. After the play, personal foul, late head out of bounds, number 20, defense, half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. And that's John Boyette, and uh, this time, was he mixed up in it, Herbie? Yeah, Boyette was up there. He had Tony Jackson also involved. He's clearly out of bounds. Cannot lower your head on especially a quarterback when he's three yards out of bounds. Easy call for the officials, but they had the play covered. It was a great job by Oregon's defense on a rollout. They had everything covered, and the mobility again is a difference there by Russell Wilson to keep that play alive. Ball twists his way to the four-yard line. about this Wisconsin offense not only have they had so much success inside the red zone when they're facing first and goal this year they've not been denied 44 for 44 when they're facing a first and goal situation Brian Wozniak a sophomore tight end from Ohio has checked in ball again that is his second and that should give him the record if I recall that was his first ties the record okay so it ties the record of Barry Sanders the 39th total touchdown what a year the coach said he took an extra half a second. They like that. They like that patience back there. Let the play develop. And the extra point is added by Philip Welch. A couple of history making runs here. First Thomas and now Maribor. Note about the weather. The Badgers in their white jerseys are completely in the shade on their sideline. Swing across right now to the darker jerseys and the Ducks for the time being remain in the California sunshine. 21-14, the Badgers lead it. 10-52 remaining here in the first half. Back from the end zone is that man again, DeAnthony Thomas. Left side. Shakes a tackle out near midfield. Kenyon Barner is now in as running back after that 46 yard return. Darren Thomas going to go deep. Got a man open on that far side. And just like that, Kenyon Barner scores on a 54 yard pass from Darren Thomas. That's the good news for the Ducks. The bad news is defense, get ready. <laughs> Brent, catch your breath and get your oxygen tank. It's going to be a long game here. How about this Kenyon Barner out of the backfield, sliding him out, and it's just an attacking mindset. Darren Thomas shows the patient to let the play develop. Barner was wide open from the time he left the backfield. He let him get about 20 yards downfield until he just feathered that ball down in there. Now Donato tacks it on. 42 points so far in the first half. Well, the Grand Marshal of the parade this morning was Iraq War veteran J.R. Martinez. You know, J.R. was badly burned after his Humvee struck a landmine. He underwent 33 operations, but later he was asked by nurses to talk to other victims in the burn unit because he was so positive and it helped in the recovery of so many of the other patients. And of course, most recently, he won Dancing with the Stars. So JR, a big football fan. He's on hand watching the game. Wish both teams good luck prior to the start. Of I, I don't know if anybody's been more thrilled to have a chance to be the Grand Marshal than JR. He has he enjoyed it. He's, he's had a great week. Wasn't that a great speech? It there was. Derby it was. At the party. So here we go again. Abaderis from the nine. 
And he's out to the 23 yard line. Terrence Mitchell and Troy Hill are the corners on this series. And the hand is to Monte Ball. And Ball is out of bounds at about the 27 yard line. Troy Hill makes a stop. Herbie, Oregon, 21 points. Total time of possession, four minutes and 14 seconds. 13 plays. Four, Two, 14. Right. Thir four minutes, a little over four minutes, 13 plays, 236 yards, 21 points. Averaging about 18 yards a play. It's not bad. Second down and three. Here is Ball again, and he's tripped up that time, and coming across with the stop is Alonzo, and Alonzo's made a couple of big plays in this game. Remember, he got in on Russell Wilson earlier in this game. Well, they rolled the dice here, and it, 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 it's a play-action pass. They potentially give up a big play, but you could see eight, nine guys close to the line of scrimmage, and they just pinned their ears back and took a chance, and that time Alonzo gets through there for the loss. Herbie Aliotti described it to me as a hockey team. He sends three defensive players back onto the field. He said, I'm bringing people right over the sideboard. He said, I'm running <laughs> them in and out all the time. Third down and five, trying to keep fresh troops on the field. Wilson surrounded. Fires complete. And Abladeris has a first down at the 36. I think they lost him in the shade. Boy, just a really nice job here by evaluating and looking at the defense. He's matched up one-on-one -on -one against Avery Patterson. Patterson again slips in coverage. It makes it pretty simple for Aberderis when Patterson goes down. But there, I, I think that Russell Wilson and Jared Aberderis, even though Nick Toon gets a lot of the attention, they seem to really grow in a relationship this year in chemistry as the year went on. Firing in zone now. Aberderis incomplete. Aberderis might have thought he was bumped, but I'm not sure the ball was catchable anyway. Yeah, and it's, it just happens to be right in front of the Wisconsin fans where Mitchell was in coverage against Aberderis. Russell Wilson that time wanted to move out to his right, but ended up coming back to his left. And Aberderis worked all the way from the right side of the field all the way to the left corner and almost was able to get behind coverage, but good coverage that time by Mitchell to stay with him. Draw play. Monty Ball. Very close to the first down. This is where Monty Ball wanted to improve. You know, as losing 20 pounds, it, it was not, he's had vision, but it's the burst right, right there. That quickness right there, how sudden he is. And it looks like he's going to maybe get a three or four yard gain. He avoids contact there, then has a spin move. Next thing you know, he picks up nine yards, and it's third and one. That was a great run that time by Ball. Stays right there for third and one with LaMichael James watching. Stopped. He had to slowly pick his way to try to find daylight, and that allowed the Ducks to penetrate. And they were able to get the job done with Kaylee Keepy. Watch Alonzo time this up. Brent, you're right. The guard's trying to pull. And by the time Frederick came around to his left, it created a seam there in the offensive line. And Alonzo consumed the guard and the fullback, and it made it easy for the rest of the defense to get in there and pre pre prevent uh, the running back there from picking up the first down. Going for it on fourth down. Play action. Steps away from the pressure. Wilson in trouble. Down, and the Ducks stop him. Alonzo makes another play. Alonzo just made the play on third down, and now he comes back in coverage on fourth down and makes a play out in space. He comes off of his man that he's covering, comes up and shows some pretty good acceleration in the open field. Remember, Russell Wilson's been running away from people. Big time play that time by Alonzo. 98 Rose Bowl from Pasadena, California. 
And that was a story on the last series as the Badgers did not come away with points after they were in to the red zone. Now off a of play action. Almost intercepted. Huff was the intended receiver and he's down folks. Slow to get up bounces back now. Josh Huff is woozy folks and we will show you why. Number one going down and watch the defensive back come up on it. And up high Aaron Henry with a collision that has Huff on the sideline and the Ducks come back with a running play to the 40 yard line. That was a second down. And we'll keep an eye on Josh Huff but a significant part of this offense along with DeAnthony Thomas and two and a gives him three great weapons on the perimeter to complement what Darren Thomas and LaMichael James and Kenyon Barner do. The Ducks spread the field. Hit. Fumble. Picked up on the bounce. Touchdown. Nizegwu. Lewis Nizegwu. From Plotville, Wisconsin. Mike Taylor comes free. Confusion up front. Good job of disguising it. The question is, is his arm coming forward before the ball came out? I'm sure the officials will take another look at this. It's such a big play. But Taylor comes free, and I don't think Darren Thomas felt him at all. He knocks that football loose. And the extra point is tacked on. Our first defensive touchdown. 49 points. 326 still to go in the first half. Second half, of course, will be in the shade with the lights on. Jackson, DeAnthony Thomas. So Huff remains out of this game after that blistering hit that he took. And here is Thomas coming out for the 5 10. And Thomas slammed down at the 12 yard line. And the Ducks come back with Michael James battling his way 30 35. And Taylor on the play again. What a linebacker number 53 is. A Wisconsin youngster, only a junior on the season. 137 tackles, eight of them for a loss, and he also had two interceptions. Uh, Taylor and Borland will not give up on a play, and that was a good effort to get downfield. But again, the issue and the challenge for Taylor and Borland against this speed is how will they play out in space trying to slow down Michael James and Kenyon Barner? Darren Thomas. Paulson, the tight end, makes his first catch of the game. That's David Paulson, the senior from Auburn, Washington. Everything comes off the play action in the passing game. Freeze the linebackers, make them have to respect the speed of Barner, and then quickly get the ball out to Paulson, a veteran who's got sure hands and picks up big yards. 249, 247. That's an eternity for the Ducks. Down by seven. And right on back with a running play. Gaining yard or so that was Barner who had checked back in of course he scored a touchdown on a reception so already Herbie we've had the most points in the first half of a Rose Bowl game 49 previous record the Badgers were involved in that 24 21 over UCLA back in 99 and Michael James gets the call tries to get that left edge but it just puts so much on Taylor and Borland. The eye discipline, the challenging them just to, to be able to stay disciplined with not just being in the right place, but you have to be able to make a quick decision on are they running the football? Is it a play action? And if you don't make a quick decision, they're by you. Sometimes you make a quick decision and it's wrong. They're taxing these linebackers. Fake to Barner. Throw. Complete to the 16-yard line, two and a. 
Here it is again. Linebackers have to come up and respect this running game. They come up and realize, okay, I, now I got to get back in coverage. It's a good throw that time. Two receivers crossing. He makes a quick throw and a quick decision that time to get it to two and eight. Here comes the jet sweeper. They're going to throw off of it. They're going to throw back with Bennett, the backup quarterback. They worked on this all week to Darren Thomas. And Darren Thomas is across the 10 yard line. And they, they Ryan snuck. Bennett <laughs> slipped into the game. He's a redshirt freshman from Encino, California. And watching Bennett all week, you know, they, there are opportunities for trick plays, and Bennett they, doesn't get a lot of chances unless Darren Thomas goes down with an injury. He was so excited to throw that, jumping up and down, hoping that Thomas would find the end zone. Second down and two. Here's Barner. Kenyon picks up the first down. It'll be first and goal. Taylor in on still another stop. His clock is down close to a minute. Remember, Wisconsin won the toss and elected to take the football, so Oregon will get the ball to start the second half. And it'll be Darren Thomas firing to the end zone. Touchdown, two and a. Waited for the headlinesman. He was very patient with the call, making sure that two and a had possession in his judgment. Matched up with Marcus Cromarty, who's a physical corner to timing, a little inside and back to the outside. See, so make sure that he holds on to the football. Great view of it right here. Has the ball ever touched the surface? Well, it's tough to see there, but the official right on top of it. So this is the fourth time, if we make this extra point here, that we will have been tied. And Maldonado makes it a 28 all and this could be a long afternoon for the duck with those push-ups yeah. the most points ever in the first half of a Rose Bowl game 56 oh. you all come on back for the second half it's going to be real entertaining let's go down now with Aaron Andrews and coach Bielma Brent, thanks so much. Brent, I, I saw you go over to your defense a couple of times and say you need to erase it, erase it, move on from these big plays. What do you tell them about stopping these quick strikes by the Ducks? Well, they're obviously very talented and got the ability to score on a single play. You saw that on two different occasions. So uh, the plays that we've given them, just guys aren't, it's not a play that we haven't seen. It's not a play that we haven't practiced. It's just guys following their rules. So we'll go into halftime. It's a 0 0 game. And, uh, you know, for us, this is kind of sitting where we would like to be sitting. Uh, got to take advantage of every opportunity. Russell Wilson again stepping up on a big stage so poised what's working for him right now. Well he's got a good feel of what's going on out on the field. He's got a great understanding of what Oregon's doing. They're doing a lot of things naturally at the line of scrimmage he's picking up on and uh, you know we're capitalizing like Monty and James done a nice job the guys up front. We just got to continue to do what we do. OK thanks Brent. Thanks Aaron. Halftime at the 98th Rose Bowl from Pasadena. We're deadlocked at 28. Stay tuned after the break for the Buick halftime show with Chris Fowler. We welcome you back to the second half of the 98th Rose Bowl game presented by Vizio. Well, we have watched the highest scoring first half in Rose Bowl history. Deadlocked at 28. So Chip Kelly and the Ducks have run 29 plays and they have 28 points. As we come to the second half and uh, welcome back everybody. Thanks for being with us and what figures to be really an exciting second half. Well I, I think you start thinking about what can these defenses do. Uh, one thing Wisconsin has got to do because there's such an advantage for Oregon and their speed is they've got to take chances. They did that and however it backfired on them. But if you're Wisconsin you keep dictating your own defense based on how well your own offense is doing. The adjustments for Bielema, Coach Bielema, has to be let's continue to attack, hope we create some turnovers and get the ball back to Russell Wilson. And what do you do if you're Oregon? You're being pounded, they're running the football, they're throwing. They've got a very, very balanced attack right now facing Chip Kelly. Again, I think you have to err on the side of being overly aggressive. When things are going downhill like this, you got to do something to turn things around. Fielded at the five yard line and DeAnthony stopped at the 22 yard line and that was Chris Borland the starting linebacker who cleaned up on him 
And let's go down below to Aaron Andrews. Brian, I had a chance to talk to Chip Kelly coming out of the half. He did tell me Josh Huff is good to go after having his bell rung in the first half of this game. Also interesting in talking to assistant coach John Neal, works with the secondary. He said it's gone the way he thought it would go. He said this Badgers team playing exactly like he studied on film. It's really going to come down to which defense can make the last play. So Aaron, the entire field now is in the shadows as night will begin to send and Michael James opens up here before Cromarty can get him out of bounds and he runs it up there near that first down marker you can see the sellout crowd the panorama as you look down on the granddaddy of them all second down and one for Michael on a slant, slips free of Taylor for a first down. Young man who probably has a future as a third down back in the National Football League, well, Michael James, and he's going to surprise the big fellas with his strength on You're third down. Exactly right. He's got great hands to catch the ball to the backfield, strong lower body, can get through tackles as he did there. And that's DeAnthony coming around, got the handoff on that jet sweep. Looking for that sideline, and he's got it again. One man. Henry can't get there. That's his second touchdown. Already he's got the record with a 91-yarder from scrimmage, and now on the jet sweep, a 64-yarder. Honey Badger would be looking for him. <laughs> Honey Badger don't care. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, Black Mamba is something. Trying to make a Heisman campaign already for 2012. <laughs> looking into next year. Oh, my. <laughs> Can this kid go? You don't want to give him the corner. This just did coaching adjustment. Don't give Black Mamba the edge. Two rushes, 155 yards, and two touchdowns for DeAnthony Thomas. The Ducks, folks, have run 32 plays for 35 points. They have nine minutes and 29 seconds total of possession. And they lead this Rose Bowl 35-28. And now it's Badger's turn. Come on out, Russell Wilson. <laughs> Aberderas awaits the kickoff. We'll field this one at the four. Gets an alley. Out of bounds at the 36 yard line. So Aberderis is stopped by Hill, but a 59 yard return. Well, he's been doing this all year for Wisconsin. And just what Russell Wilson needs, great field position, a nice job by the entire return unit. And I'll tell you, Aberderis, when he gets to the outside, he will surprise you with his quickness. Troy Hill able to push him out of bounds. So now the Badgers will see if they can attack for the tying touchdown. Ball, middle, over the top to the 13-yard line. Good old-fashioned Wisconsin football. Third and short, the power game. Pull the big guard, Travis Frederick, around. And up and over that time for Monty Ball. Who does he think he is, Simpson of the Bengals? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, well, well, you got to get over that helmet yeah, that. Yeah. that shiny helmet oh. you got to clear stay clear of that boys Hello. a little higher ball puts his way behind the right side of that huge offensive line Zeitler and Oglesby Michael Clay with the stop for the Ducks talked a lot about the success that Wisconsin has down in the red zone and 
I think it's a couple things. Their ability to be physical and run the football, but having a veteran quarterback that makes good decisions with the play-action pass, his mobility is kind of that X factor down in this area. If things are covered, he can create. So they can do a lot of different things down in this area for a defense to have to deal with. Russell Wilson did score a touchdown running in the first half. But after that, the Ducks a little bit tougher on his running game. And Bell slips. Ball slips at the 12 yard line, and that's going to bring up the third down. And we'll see if Paul Chris, the offensive coordinator, is headed to Pittsburgh as their head coach after this game, just dials up a little shotgun pass here. Well, it, it, you got to. You got to think that Oregon's going to come with pressure here on third down. Not, you don't want to give Russell Wilson time to sit back there, whether he's rolling out or sitting in the pocket. See if Nick Aliotti gets creative with his pressure package here. And there is Russell back in the gun. He has to throw it away. Nick Toon was double covered. Boyette, the safety, had rotated over to help the corner. And here comes the field goal unit for the Badgers. And they brought both their outside linebackers that time. Lacombo actually got to Russell Wilson to make him have to get rid of that football before he had a chance to let the play develop. So See. Philip Welsh, who is four of five this year, he has had one blocked in the course of the season. His Holder is the punter Brad Norton. And he tacks on three. Thirty-five, thirty-one, Oregon leads. Uh, the San Gabriel's sun setting in Southern California. And that's a story, the fact that the Badgers were held to a field goal. And the return men for the Ducks have moved up to about the 14 yard line now. DeAnthony Thomas, along with Brian Jackson. Remember, Josh Huff took a big blow in the first half. Otherwise, he'd have been back here with DeAnthony. Drilling one to DeAnthony. One yard. He's on that line. No, they said they said he downed it in the end zone in time. So it's a first down and ten. But it should be second down as the run was stopped earlier. And Borland makes the stop. Unless the whistle blew when Bielman was out on the field. And I think that's what happened down there is that when Bielman was raising a, a ruckus, they did get it stopped. Before that first snap. Yeah. And then he was informed sure. that the replay booth can't turn that over. But the timeout will not be given back to Bielma. So he's down to one timeout now. And it is second down and seven. And Michael James forced out of bounds at the 25 yard line southward. I hate to keep beating this this point up, but I really wonder if the, the reaction from the crowd here in the stadium by looking at the replay booth maybe forced his hand a bit to try to get the timeout and try to get the potential review. Maybe the crowd had an impact there on on Brett Bielma trying to get that timeout. I'm assuming that they saw the replay, right? Absolutely. They, they, they saw it on the big screen. And now trying to set a screen. And there was no screen for the receiver. He was naked to the world, and Bo Allen makes a stop, and, and the Ducks are forced to punt. Alert Sports Center. We got to stop here, and a punter. We got a, a punter on the field. Good job. They sat back in zone this time, and Shelton Johnson was involved, just sitting right there, read the play perfectly, and they were able to corral that time James and that speed of Oregon. So here's Rice and a beautiful high punt. Aberdera still thinks he's got time. And the 27 slips the tackle, cuts to the left, and brought down at the 37 yard line. So good coverage. Aberdera is dangerous on the return. Badgers have got the ball back. They trail it by four. 
Scotty Ball watching from the sidelines has 146 yards white 29 didn't like what he saw with Toon, so Russell Wilson is going to keep it himself and step out of bounds after a couple of yards looked like he wanted to go to Toon, and he didn't like what he saw well, it was a running play and he wanted to come off of it board it and just throw the football out there to the outside a little bit of a mix up this is something new this this week for this game that Russell Wilson has is the check with me at the line of scrimmage here a little stiff arm for the middle linebacker Stuckey but that time not quite on the same page with his wide receivers and he didn't have anything to do with it but at least he got a couple yards out of the play Second down and eight. Breaking a tackle is White. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage that time. Alonzo. That was a big, big hit there at the line of scrimmage. And James White saying, I know Monty Ball is the physical guy, but I can keep my legs moving and bounce off of defenders as well. This time he'll check out of the game. And another big third down for Wisconsin. Yeah, Lacombo blew the play up. Now ball is back. Got the snap. Pressure. On the move. Gonna keep it. Can he get the first down? Yes. To the 30-yard line. A powerful run with Eddie Pleasant bringing him down. Here's the X factor in this game for Wisconsin's offense. Third down and long. You have things covered downfield, and here comes Russell Wilson. Gets to the outside, gets wide of Taylor Hart, and then is able to you see his vision. He's downfield. He wants to be able to throw the ball, but once he gets outside of Hart, he has the first down and a good effort by Pedersen downfield blocking. Now White checks back in. That was 17 yards on third and eight. Badgers are at the Ducks' 18-yard line. Going to throw on first down. Corner of the end zone. Tune. The official goes down. Touchdown. An 18 yard strike from Russell Wilson to Nick Toon. Second touchdown pass of the game for Wilson. Brent, did you see the football halfway in the air by the time Nick Toon turned around to make a play on it? By the time he adjusted the route to the outside, the ball was already delivered by the quarterback, Russell Wilson. Great timing and rhythm that time between Wilson and Nick Toon for the touchdown. So one thing came out of that confusion and that timeout. It took the Ducks out of the rhythm. The Badgers got the ball back. They come down and strike and now lead it 38-35. Russell Wilson on first and 10 keeps the safeties over. He kind of has his eyes off to the left, but still has a chance to be able to deliver that football in the air over top of the linebackers. And before the corner could actually make a play on it, the ball is thrown away from him. Nick Toon secures that for a big touchdown for Wisconsin. Just a wonderful, wonderful scene here in Pasadena. The 98th Rose Bowl. This one presented by Vizio. Badger faithful here, enjoying this 80 degree weather. And now Bucky joins in. Gotta get a little deeper on those pushes. <laughs> <laughs> the Duck has had a lot more practice through the years. <laughs> a for effort. There I am, Duck. Here we go. There's DeAnthony Thomas, and this time he does not hesitate. He comes out. And he is down at the 24-yard line. The Michael James play action. Darren Thomas down the middle of the field. What a great grab. 2 and a with a big time grab at the 40 yard line and the Ducks are back in business. And here's the view from our direct TV ultimate picture cam. Brent you hit it play action as they've done all night. He patiently waits for 2 and a to get down further. That is a great catch by 2 and a and he waited until the last split second to get his hands up. So Cromartie couldn't realize the football was coming in to be able to knock it away. 
Then they come back with the running play, and LaMichael slips free. Got a first down, spins to the 25-yard line. Southward with the stop for the Badgers. Uh, he, he has the acceleration, the lateral quickness, but he also can pull defenders with him. He's not a little back that you're just going to be able to push down with an arm tackle. You better be able to wrap him up if you want to slow down LaMichael James. Michael, nothing doing, made the most up. Ball came free, but I believe the Ducks, I believe that was Paulson who picked it up. I don't know if his knee was on the ground. That's the end of the third quarter. Yeah, Brett, it sounded like we may have had a whistle there. I mean, Oregon ends up recovering anyway, but. That was a fumble, but it was recovered by Paulson. And I remember, a whistle can be overruled in a situation yeah. like that. So a break for the Ducks. We've come to the end of the third quarter. A Camp Randall Stadium tradition comes to Pasadena. The House of Pains jump around. Turn and lose, Badgers. Then it was the Ducks' turn to throw their hands in the air. The Isley Brothers classic show. The players down on the field, folks, they all stopped to look at the to look at the fans of the stands. Kenyon Barner in as the running back for the Ducks, incomplete through a little bit high. Huff back on the field. That's nice to see. He was shaken up in the first half. Muldoon that time getting a hand on that football. Where Oregon had a chance to pick up a first down. Nice play that time to knock that football away. They want to jump around now. The Badgers do. This is third and nine. Coming into the Badger fans part of the field. Throws in underneath. The Anthony breaks free. Steps out. First down. They had a chance. It would have been a tough play to make for Desmond Southward. But he was there with a chance. Again, can Wisconsin make plays in space? That was a question and kind of a theme to this game. Southwood was there. It's a tough ask. That time, DeAnthony Thomas pulled away from him for the first. Jet fake. Darren keeps it. Fires in zone. Caught. Touchdown. Two and A again. Two and A with two touchdown catches. Russell Wilson says, well, it'll be our turn now. That time, Darren Thomas rolling to the short side. Did a really good job examining the field to the play side and then coming all the way to the back side to find Tuane, who was pulling away from a defender. 42-38. Darris awaits at the 12. Abaderas down at the 33-yard line, and that's where Russell Wilson will put it in play. Play action on first down. Can't find a receiver. Wilson will throw it away. Russell Wilson. Coaches from Wisconsin would tell you in their two losses to Michigan State and Ohio State, when they trailed, he's played some of his best football. He has, again, that calming effect on his team that when they were down 31 to 17 against Michigan State, he brought him back to 31 31 before that Hail Mary. And a week later in Columbus, they were down big and he fought back. It looked like they had a potential game winning drive there, only to have Braxton Miller steal it away. So he plays very well under pressure late in the game. ball for a loss hit by Michael Clay play the junior from San Jose 
Well, he is a sure tackler. You're not going to see Michael Clay just come in kamikaze style and bounce off Amani Ball. He seems to wrap up every time he gets a chance. He brings his hands and his arms, and he's able to wrap up. This time, he shoots a gap, takes a bit of a risk, and it pays off for the Oregon defense on second and long. Third and 14. Underneath to ball. No first down. Badgers forced to punt. First time I think I can remember anyway, Brent, maybe you can correct me, that I've seen this Oregon defense play with some fire where these guys are flying to the football as an entire defense. And I don't know if they're sensing the importance of this drive or if the crowds had an impact on them, but the freshman, Troy Hill, who's out here, has to be able to make a play against Monty Ball, and he's the first to defender there until five other ducks fly in to help out. LaMichael James awaits the Brad Nortman punt. It's a beauty. LaMichael. Thrown down at the 10-yard line. Oregon with an interception and now a three and out. 80 points, 918 yards of offense. The biggest lead, seven points. And the Ducks hope to go past that now, up by four and a football back on the 10. And Michael for four yards before he's brought down by Borland. Ducks have had just so many big plays and Wisconsin's defense trying to keep them deep in this territory. They fake the screen and come downfield. Two and A again, midfield. They set three receivers to the right and faked the screen and two and A went downfield. Well, this is a bread and butter play. If you're an Oregon Ducks fan, you've seen this a lot where they just show that kind of a decoy where they show that screen and then get it downfield to receiver. This time it's Tune who was the inside receiver. Nobody picked him up because they were so concerned about that quick throw to the outside. That's 150 yards for Tune after that 41 yarder. Now the first down at the 45 yard line. Coming back with a run play and it picks up six, LaMichael James. Remember the game you and I called last year in the national championship against Auburn? 2 and A had a pretty good game. You expected a lot from Jeff Mayo, but 2 and A ends up having a pretty good day catching the football when Darren Thomas had to throw against Auburn because they couldn't run the ball. Second down with Barner. Second and 25. And they come back attacking with the running play, and Barner still on the field. Now that play right there gives Darren Thomas a chance here with the way this game has gone and with the concerns they've had over the year with their field goal kicking you wonder if this is still depending on where they get potentially four down territory for Chip Kelly. Darren going to throw it. Come in underneath and try to pick it up with DeAnthony Thomas, who's down at the 30-yard line. And now this will bring up the fourth down. Mike Taylor makes the stop, and here comes the decision. 47-yard field goal from there. You're going to go. Going to go. Got what he wants. Fourth down. Darren Thomas. Throws in underneath, and they've got the first down. Two and A comes back and makes still another catch. They brought pressure up the middle. Oregon picks it up and gives Darren Thomas just enough time this time to be able to make the throw on fourth down. And two and A again comes up big for this Ducks offense. Two and A now with 158 yards on his eight catches. LaMichael James checks back into the backfield. And he'll get this carry. And he is stopped as he came across the 20 yard line. But it's not just that Chip Kelly goes for it on fourth down. 
it's that his offense knows that if we don't make it, get lined up and go fast. I was impressed that Wisconsin was actually lined up and got their call in and got to try to get the pressure on Darren Thomas. Now Barner back in. His turn up the middle. And this becomes third and manageable. And you know now he's certainly in four down territory down here, up by four. Ducks have had this drive now going on 11 plays, 74 yards, over five minutes. And they've come to another fourth down. The young man who scored a touchdown is Egwu with that defensive stop for the Badgers. Looking for the play call for the sideline. Maldonado on. His holder is Jackson Rice. Well, Jackson Rice, a very good quarterback, is a holder. He's the young man who signals whether they're going to go for two or one on the extra point. This would be a 30 yarder. And it would put the Ducks up by seven. Got it. That's big for Mononato. Big. Always heard about it from the time he missed the USC field goal. Is Oregon can't kick, and that time he steps up big with a Rose Bowl on the line. Rudd Bailman and the Badgers are about to get it back. Already, in the Big Ten, I believe it was their lone win. They went triple overtime as Michigan State defeated Georgia. And now here are the Badgers going toe to toe with the best of the Pac 12. Everdaris. Twenty comes wide right. The 30 yard line. Monty Ball with 161 yards. In as the running back. Into the middle. And you can see big Oglesby. Reaching down for a leg. He's 300 pound offensive lineman of the Badgers now. The ball looked like he was limping a bit coming back to the huddle. Stays on the field. Second down and six. Play action. Got a man open. Aberderis, 30. Fumble. The Ducks pounce on it. Aberderis lost the ball on that sideline if he wasn't already down. Down around the 30 yard line. Let's take a big look at this. He knocks the football loose. The ball somehow stays in bounds. It never comes close to going to the boundary. You said it earlier to me during commercial. You said this game's going to revolve around a turnover late. late. And you know what? There it is. This could be that it. Could be the it. only thing is, folks, remember this. Ball control is not a duck strength. <laughs> that last drive they had took forever. It was five minutes. I mean, that's it. <laughs> that might be their longest of the season. <laughs> exactly. First down and ten. Inside to LaMichael James, and James is to the 33-yard line, and now Chip Kelly will try to chip away at that clock. This is the route before where he was able to look how he turns Mitchell around completely. Just a great job. He's wide open. Well executed. He just doesn't hold on to the football. This is Oregon's version now of working the clock. They still go to the hurry up, but now they just sit there and look over to Chip Kelly and let the play clock work down. If you're Wisconsin, it's a one possession game now. The Rose Bowl championships on the line. If they give up any points at all, this game's over. They've got to attack this Oregon offense. And now we look back at that timeout that Brett Bielema used, and of course now they're only left with one here late in the game. That ball came free, but he was down, he recovered it. Johnson was trying to get on it. So now three minutes coming up. Oregon up by seven with a third down at one.
He gets them lined up. And Wisconsin's so used to the hurry up mode. And now the play clock works its way down inside five seconds, which is where Darren Thomas eventually is going to snap this. And he battles for the first down. Now down to two and a half. So, um, what is that, Herbie? 95 years? <laughs> yeah. I did good. not do that game. <laughs> you did not. <laughs> you did not. So there is the uh, the team back in 1917. That's that's the uniforms have come a long ways, haven't they, folks? First down and ten. Looking over to the sidelines. Yeah, broke that clock. Wisconsin has got to stop them. Use their last time out. Well, we've been seeing some great views of the game, courtesy of the Direct TV Ultimate Picture Cam, and uh, let us thank our director Derek Mobley, our producer Bill Bunnell, associate director Bonnie Riley, and technical director John Zippy, the East Raider Bob Salmi, Paul Krugman, and all of our gang, including associate producer Brian Boyle. So thanks to everybody on the crew. For the job that they have done with this Rose Bowl and they'll pack up their gear and they'll head down to one of the busiest sports weeks ever in New Orleans the Saints with a home game on Saturday night against the Detroit like get on down there we're going there watch a few of those rascals play I and mean, Monday night it's LSU and Alabama for the national championship. Come on the clock now. Third down. Obviously, clock out of timeouts, clock moving. Here comes to Michael, and he's not going to get it. Stays in bounds, goes down. Nisegwu scored a touchdown, defensive touchdown for the Badgers, making the play over there. Mm. This is where not having a timeout really hurts as you watch those yeah. seconds start to tick off that clock right now. And you're looking at they're going to bring off 15 20 seconds no depending question. on the return no question and Brad Bill ended up calling a timeout so here's Aberderis makes a fair catch at the 12 and look who's down on top of him DeAnthony Thomas who had been practicing all week as one of the gunners and they send him in at this time to make sure that Abraderas does not get a return how about this <laughs> freshman here tonight one of the gunners after two long touchdowns including a record setter 91 yards the longest run from scrimmage and there he was all over Abraderas. Wow, what a night for the freshman. He had a big smile on his face coming back, coming down on that, that punt uh, coverage team. Hometown, back home, high school here, of course, in Los Angeles. 16 seconds for Russell Wilson. Pump coming long. Got Aberdeen. So we got to get out of bounds. Nine seconds. And the problem here, of course, is they need a touchdown. They've got to go the distance. Field goal won't help them. Well, he picks up some big yards, picks up the first down, which would have stopped the clock. But then Aberderis gets out of bounds. If you're Oregon, you don't want to get cute here. Any chance you have to keep Wisconsin in bounds, you want to. Ali Odi sets his safeties back on his own 25, nearly 20-yard line right now. In a prevent, Wilson. He's got Toon and down in the field. So Toon is upended and it'll stop briefly. There's no time to really spike it with two seconds, is there? And Toon is shaken up on the play. He's going to stay on the field. This looks like the last snap of the ball game. He's going to try to spike it here. And he did. But I, the clock time ran out, didn't it? The, the clock responded to the officials in the appropriate manner. After further review, prior to the spiking of the pass, the clock went to zero. The game is over. The Oregon Ducks 
win the 98th Rose Bowl. Chip Kelly finally captures a BCS victory. And another Pasadena heartbreak for the Badgers. The trophy will go north to Eugene, Oregon. So let's go down to Chris Fowler now for the trophy presentation. Chris. Brent, thank you. We've all seen something very special, folks. Not many of the 98 Rose Bowls have been as entertaining as this. Time now for the trophy presentation. We first recognize Mr. William Wang, the founder and the CEO of Vizio. And now Rick Jackson, the 2012 Tournament of Roses president, present the trophy, Rick. On behalf of the Tournament of Roses, I am pleased to present to you, Coach Kelly, the Rose Bowl Games Champions Trophy. Congratulations. <laughs> Folks, I, I, I don't know how many of you were here for the 1917 Rose Bowl, but that was the last time and the only time the Oregon Ducks have won this game. Chip, what does this victory represent for the program? You know, for all of our fans out there, it's been 95 years since you could say Oregon Ducks Rose Bowl champions. And it's about this, this group right here. You guys had to fight for four quarters, just as you have in a couple of big stages in recent years. What to you made the difference down the stretch? I think these kids just believe they have a faith in each other that it's always going to work out for them, and it's based on their preparation. They buy into everything. Our coaching staff and our players get along so well. There's a great chemistry between all of us because we love and respect each other. We'll talk to the two MVPs. One of them, the defensive MVP, Kiko Alonso, a guy who's had an interesting journey. He had to overcome a lot, his own mistakes and some bad luck. What does this represent to you as his coach the night he had this? Today? Yeah, I, I get welled up about that, but I love Kiko. And I told him it wasn't about his interception, but what he's done and how he's come back is what this deal's all about. He's an outstanding young man. I love the kid. Chip, congratulations. Let's speak now to the defensive player of the game. You're back here in your home state. We talked about your journey here, which has been, you know, some bad luck's been part of it. Your mistakes have been part of it. What does this represent to persevere and have this game? Man, it feels great. Uh, it's been a long run. We've been doing this since, since January, and we knew that we had, to, we had to go all the way, all four quarters, and it was great. Your interception set up the game-winning points. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Let's bring in Lavoisier, too, and a couple of touchdowns. Your final game was an Oregon Duck. What does this represent to you? Man, uh, it's, it's a great feeling. I mean, we, we worked hard to get to this point, and when we had the opportunity to, you know, come out like this, everyone stepped up, and we won. Congratulations to the Ducks. Brent, back to you. All right, and up next on ESPN, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Along with Kirk Herbstreit and Aaron Andrews and our entire crew, I'm Brent Musburger. We congratulate our 2012 Rose Bowl champions, the Oregon Ducks. Lavance Tunia and Tunia with eight catches for 158 yards and two touchdowns. Darren Thomas pulled the trigger. 17 to 23, 268 yards, three touchdowns, and the electric DeAnthony Thomas, two rushes, 155 yards, and two TDs. Now let's go to Glendale, Arizona, Stanford, and Oklahoma State. Oh, next, everybody, so long.